The new Bravos washer has a fourth dispenser and an internal heater. The motor has an extended five-year warranty. The fourth dispenser is for OxyCleaners. OxyClean is a great product, but only on organic stains. Organics include things like grass stains, juices, blood, dirt, and so forth. Chemically-based stains like ink and oil, etc., may not be aided at all by OxyClean and may require a different type of detergent. The tub has been altered to accept a heater. The heater is designed to maintain the heat in the water. There are two service concerns with this heater. The gasket expands to seal against the opening in the tub. Once it's been installed, it takes a seat. So if a heater is removed, it becomes next to impossible to reinstall the same part. It's advised to remove the heater only if you have a replacement part in hand. The other concern is that the heater needs to be installed straight into the opening. If it is forced in at an upward angle, it could install above the bracket. If this happens, there'll be enough clearance so that the heater will not hit the basket, but the gasket most likely would not seal. The new Bravos dryer has a stronger motor and blower. It can vent up to 100 feet. It also has the extended five-year motor warranty. The top is released by using a putty knife to release the spring clips at the front corners. Make sure that the door is open when you lift the top. If the door is closed when the lid is lifted, the top will be scratched. The front panel is secured with a 5 16 inch screw and clips onto the standard panel clip at the bottom. Once the panel is off, remove the filter screen and four filter housing mounting screws. This leaves the front bulkhead. It's held on with four screws. The top two mounts have keyways. The belt may now be removed from the pulley and the drum removed out the front. The blower system is different than you've seen before on Whirlpool products. There's a tab built into the blower housing to ensure proper belt orientation. Here are comparison venting charts. The door strike has been changed to nylon and the catch is Teflon coated to give the door closure and pull a smoother feel. Inspired by consumer research, Maytag will transition the entire line's aesthetics to a new distinctive look during the third and fourth quarters. The basic model numbers will not change. Fifteen and a half inch pedestals have changed their model numbers. The Whirlpool designator has changed to an X. They may be used across brands. The rear panel has been replaced with a V brace. This allows better access to the rear pedestal feet. The fully extending slides have been replaced with three-quarter extension slides. This will reduce dipping of the drawer when heavy detergents are placed in the front and will allow for laundry baskets to be placed on the top of the drawer. When turning the cycle knob, the wrong LEDs are eliminated. Do not replace the CCU or UI. The control has been forced onto the encoder wheel in an incorrect orientation. When assembling the control, assure that the flat of the encoder shaft is correctly aligned with the flat of the encoder wheel that is attached to the back of the knob. Inspect the encoder wheel shaft for possible damage. For a jackhammer noise, suspect loose damper nuts or a twisted damper. Use blue Loctite on all threads. Do not over-tighten the bracket mount. It can twist the damper. Check for loose clinch locks, too. The repair of a loose clinch lock is covered under Tech Tips. To straighten a twisted damper or tighten a loose nut, use a pressure tool to clamp the damper base. This will stop rotation as you tighten the nut. Use blue Loctite on the threads. For a squeak noise, check the spring bracket. It may be worn down, cracked, or missing, allowing metal-to-metal -metal contact. We do not recommend any lubricant at this spot. Non-petroleum-based lubricants will deteriorate the bracket. If you must use something, use a non-petroleum-based lube such as silicone. The bracket 
8181763 is found in the top and cabinet parts list. There are four areas where components can be secured by using foam tape or a wire tie from making vibration noises. Secure the harness protector with a wire tie. The CCU with foam tape. The pressure switch with foam tape. And the drain hose with foam tape. This returned unit was repaired with one wire tie and some foam tape. This is a picture of a clinch lock. You're looking at the base of a duet setting upside down. By the way, these units should never be positioned upside down, even with the shipping bolt still in place. The springs can dislodge from the side panel or the tub. The clinch lock is used in the manufacturing process to secure two pieces of metal, the cabinet flange and the base. To be overly simple, a rod presses into the two pieces of metal and then the other tooling spreads it out. Many front load washers, Samsung sourced and those with serial numbers starting with HL, CS, and CA, use a clinch lock weld between the base and the side panels. If you've gone through the normal checks for a vibrating front load washer, or you've repaired the jackhammer noise, check for a poor fitting clinch lock. Use a flat bladed screwdriver inserted between the base plate and the bottom of the side panel to see if there's any movement. If the screwdriver can be easily inserted, this indicates a poor clinch lock between the two components. To repair poor fitting clinch locks, drive eight self-tapping screws, numbers 33001882, along the bottom of the side panels at the location shown, four on each side. A service kit containing eight screws is being assembled. F1 codes, especially on first installations, do not replace the CCU. The pump drive error means that the CCU did not get feedback from the pump that it received the signal, probably a loose wire connection. A power glitch may cause this error. Check for loose wires at the AC noise filter, at Molex connections, at the control. Check the power cord to wall receptacle connection. Any of these kinds of loose connections will make enough AC noise to cause this code to appear. Replacing the control is always the last step of the diagnostic process. On the LHW0050P, the on-off button may go too far onto the on-off switch, allowing it to bottom out on the control panel before the switch is fully activated. Add shim material to the shaft of the button to keep it from bottoming out on the control panel. The tub ring has been modified to direct all of the water back into the tub in order to stop an intermittent water leak usually found at the left front corner of the washer. With the original tub ring, water may collect on the tub ring as water enters from the detergent dispenser and then drips onto the floor. The part numbers have not changed. W10130807 is for the impeller models, and W10130806 is for the agitator models. All parts in Whirlpool's inventory have been purged to the modified part. Log valves for the Maytag Bravos washers will soon include the harness. It will plug directly into the control. Eventually, the Cabrio will use the same part. When ordering a lid hinge for the Cabrio or Bravos washer, make sure that you're ordering the correct part by the model number. If a glass hinge is installed on a non-glass lid, the lid will not want to stay closed, causing latching issues. As inventory runs out, the Cabrio recirculation pump and drain pump will change from having a bracket with two rubber grommets to a single hard mount bracket. There's no change to the mounting screw location, so they'll be backwards compatible. It does use counterweight screws that will come with the replacement pumps. This change will coincide with a digit change on the unit and a part sub for replacement parts. 
The new ATC combo switch was at first programmed to automatically sense if the incoming water supply hoses were reversed. If it sensed that they were reversed, it would automatically correct the situation by reversing the power to the hot and cold fill valves. The ATC looked at the thermistor input one minute into the fill every time a cold fill was selected. If it saw the temperature above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, it would store it in memory and swap the cold and hot outputs on the ATC switch. Every time that the machine went into a cold fill, the control performed this temperature verification. This verification would happen during the wash and or the rinse fill depending on the model. It was found that the programming was off by 15 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 instead of 95. In very warm climates, incoming cold water may not be below 80 degrees Fahrenheit one minute into the fill. The ATC would assume that the hoses were reversed and then electrically reverse the power to the coils, letting in hot water when cold was selected. The latest revision switches have corrected the temperature calibration and have eliminated the automatic hose reversing feature. All parts in Whirlpool's inventory have been reprogrammed to the correct temperature calibration and have had the automatic hose reversal feature removed. The auto load detection system on the classic washer system has a control that will sense the load in a washing machine to provide the required amount of water during fill and rinse. This control will interface with the new flow meter, the current ATC combo switch, and the timer as required during a cycle. The new control will provide customer benefits of new energy-saving water options. The system will replace the current pressure switch. Competitors are developing load sensing options as well. During the first fill, the water will enter to the low level, then agitate for 10 seconds. This is to assure that all of the clothing becomes saturated. The load sensing control will analyze the adjusting information from the flow meter and the pressure sensor to then fill to a proper level. The second fill will fill by volume measured by the flow meter. The accessory plug is a test point for the factory. The auto load detection control is the fabric softener switch. If softener added is selected, the unit will give it a full size fill in the rinse cycle. If no softener added is selected, the rinse fill will be measured. All failures default to high water levels. Besides the thermistor, the fill valve assembly has a dual check valve since there is not a water inlet air gap. Water enters directly into the tub ring. It has three spray outlets. Lids that are oil canned and large lids that have been slightly bent across the back will impact the hinge to the lid switch alignment, preventing proper operation. All traditional top load models except HE top load and front load will have the inlet hoses removed with the launch of the top load V model line for each brand. This allows the customer the option to choose the type and length hose that they desire. This change also provides the dealer with a new source of revenue generation. In addition to selling standard inlet hoses with purchases, associates will have the opportunity to talk to consumers about inlet hose upgrades and educate them about the importance of periodically changing the water inlet hoses to reduce the risk of fusing and bursting. Whirlpool offers five washer inlet hoses. Four foot black. These hoses have anti-corrosive couplings, pre-installed high quality EPDM washers, and a 1050 PSI burst strength. Six foot black with 90 degree elbow. These hoses have a space saving 90 degree elbow, anti-corrosive couplings, pre-installed high quality EPDM washers, and a 1,050 PSI burst strength. Five-foot red-blue EPDM. These hoses have brass anti-corrosive couplings, pre-installed high-quality EPDM washers, a large diameter for maximum water flow, and an 1,100 PSI burst strength. Five-foot nylon braided. These hoses have hypro-blue steel anti-corrosive couplings, 
a nylon-braided protective layer, pre-installed high-quality EPDM washers, a large diameter for maximum water flow, and a 1,700 PSI burst strength. Six-foot nylon braided with 90-degree elbow. These hoses have a space-saving 90-degree elbow, Hypro Blue steel anti-corrosive couplings, a nylon braided protective layer, pre-installed high-quality EPDM washers, a large diameter for maximum water flow, and a 1,700 PSI burst strength. All Whirlpool hoses exceed IAPMO, CSA, ANSI, IEC 61770, and RMA standards, and are designed for use with both hot and cold water inlet. They're better than stainless steel and will not conduct electricity. It's recommended to replace inlet hoses after five years of use to reduce the risk of hose failure. A fix for the thin twin shocks went in production at the factory with serial numbers starting on the MU-27 in June of 2007. The correct installation of these parts are critical for assuring proper operation. If one shock goes bad, all three must be replaced at the same time. The other two will have been stressed by the bad shock. Individual shock part numbers sub to a kit that contains three shocks, blue Loctite, three self-tapping screws, and an instruction sheet. Secure the shock to the base before securing it to the tub support. Only turn the bell housing. Turning the shock by the rubber area will damage the new part. Use blue Loctite on the threads. If the threads in the base are stripped, a 25 by 13 nut, same as the nut on top of the suspension shock, part number 279710, can be used to secure the shock to the base. It's recommended to use the locking washer along with the nut. After you've installed the shocks to the base, drive three self-drilling screws provided with the kit through the base from the bottom, penetrating through the lower cup of the suspension shock at all three shock locations. Locate the screws 5 8 inch from the center of the shock stud. This will assure no twisting of the shock during the operation and becoming loose. Following a dash change on the Duet dryer, the power cube was removed. The console lights will be dimmer in diagnostic modes. The leading zero has been dropped from the display in order to conserve energy with the power cube missing. A handful of customers will compare the LED brightness of washer to the dryer. They may notice a difference. It's normal for the two appliances to have different brightness levels. A new dryer motor mounting clamp is in production. This part may be removed and installed without the use of tools, 10 pounds per inch or less. It allows better tactile sensation to assure that it's properly secured, and it eliminates injury resulting from a hand tool slipping off the clamp during installation. It's backwards compatible with everything except the 29-inch bulkhead because it currently needs the shielded rear clamp. A digit number change on the 29-inch dryer will introduce a new bulkhead that will have a formed-in sock guard. The new bulkheads will accept either clamp, but the old bulkhead will not accept the new clamp. 